Hello, everyone. My name is Zachary Boyget. This is Xavier Lebrec and Jacob Wojciechowski, and together we are Team Taco, and uh, we were tasked with designing a cellular pump controller. But before we get into that, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our company. So Taco is a leader in hydronic solutions, and that is using the flow of water as a means of transferring heat. So over their 100 years of business, they've become very experienced and trusted name throughout the world. So our project focuses on the agriculture and mining business specifically. Um, so each one of these small circles that you see in this picture here are small uh, plot farms that need water. These water is um, produced by the uh, turbine pump that you see right there. So the problem with that is that this is such a remote area. If an adjustment needs to be made to the pump or a pump goes down, someone has to manually go out to this field and make that adjustment or fix that pump. So that wastes a lot of time and money for the company themselves. So that's where our project aims to cut down on, as well as bringing Taco into the IoT business. So our best anticipated outcome for our project is to create a cellular pump controller that's able to monitor and adjust a pump remotely through an application. And we're happy to say at this moment in time that we have achieved that. So this is an overview of our entire project. As you can see in the middle here, we have a BeagleBone black microcontroller that's the brains of our operation. That's powered through an AC power supply that goes through a transformer that turns it into 24 volts DC. This 24 volts DC is able to power, power our sensors. So our sensors range anywhere from temperature, flow rate, to pressure, and that will give you all the data that you really need to monitor your pump effectively. So to change the flow rate and the status of the pump on and off, we use a motor controller, which, uh, VFD, which is a variable frequency drive. So that's all controlled from our BeagleBlown that adjusts the, the VFD themselves. So we're able to do this remotely using a cellular modem that connects us to the Verizon 4G network. So that'll connect us to the network that will be able to talk to AWS, and then our app will be able to monitor AWS to display the things that you need to know. So now I'd like to hand over to Xavier to talk about the hardware. Thank you, Zach. All right, so we began our journey towards our best anticipated outcome by focusing on pump monitoring. As you can see here, these sensors were used uh, as, a as a basis to monitor the pump. We had to give them a 24 volts DC, and then with their outputs, they were too high to be accepted by the BeagleBone, so we had to run them through resistor networks. This way they can be accepted by the BeagleBone and then converted to actual values for the users to be displayed on the app. Next was pump control. The pump is controlled on a VFD, as Zach mentioned, a variable frequency drive. This variates the speed of the pump based on a 20 to 60 hertz speed. And this, we were able to program the VFD using MCT10, which is the motion control tool, and uh, adjust the flow rate to a 2 to 10 volt uh, input. This is medium difficulty due to the fact uh, we had no prior experience with VFDs and it required a lot of time uh, researching and uh, reading instruction manuals. Next, we had a battery backup. Just in case uh, the pump is out in the field and it, uh, something happens, the pump goes down, we wanted users to be able to be, uh, uh, wanted the users to know that the pump went down. So we wanted a battery backup, so this way our cellular modem would still have power and we'd be able to send a text message to the user letting them know that an error has occurred. This battery backup lasts for about 20 minutes and uh, it was pretty easy due to the fact that the BeagleBone already had a battery, battery backup management system embedded in it. And lastly was the PCB. This was done on Mentor Graphics, which is Takeo's PCB software. Uh, the difficulty in this task was because of uh, the lack of parts in Takeo's library required me to uh, have to build a lot of the decals required for the parts on this project. The main components being the voltage regulator right here that steps down to 24 volts on the power plane to 15 volts to be able to supply power to this op amp to amplify a PWM signal to be able to control the VFD. And right here is where we connect to the VFD. This other voltage regulator is where we connect, uh, is where we step down the 25 volts to five volts to be able to power the BeagleBone and the cellular modem. And as you can see here, we have these pluggable terminals, which is, uh, provides ease of connect and disconnect of sensors. Uh, these are the headers, so this way the, uh, this board can mount right on top of the BeagleBone. And then we have this set of LEDs that allows kind of like a user interface to let uh, the users know when the sensors are properly connected as well as the bottom set of, sens set of sensors uh, provides the cellular strength for the modem. And right in the middle is a Maxim 1061 chip, which eventually is going to provide cybersecurity for our project, but we weren't able to implement it in time. But I'm going to hand it over now to Jacob to talk about the rest of the software. Thank you.
Okay, so the software had three major components in it. We're going to have the CPC, so this is going to be the device that's actually in the field. This is what is reading the data. You're going to have an application that you can view, and then there's AWS, which is the middleman between both. So first, the embedded device. This right here is actually what the, uh, the BeagleBone Black and the Cellular Cape look like. This is what's in the field, and the key parts of this is that it uses that cellular communication. Cellular communication is actually paid by the amount of data usage, so we had to incorporate message delays to not rack up a big bill for Takeo's company while they deploy a bunch of these in the field. The main focus was to have a 30-minute delay based on if everything's going well, but also make sure that errors are sent immediately if, so that way the user can know that something's going wrong. Second, AWS. Like stated, this is the middleman between both sides. AWS has something called a shadow document, and this is how both sides, like I said, uh, talk to the shadow document rather than talking to each other, and they both monitor this. On the shadow document, it's uh, almost a dictionary which is key value pairs, so it has things like the desired state. So this is saying that the pump, we want the pump to be on. The reported state is what the pump is telling us, so it's telling us it's off, and the delta state means something just changed, and it changed to off. So AWS can monitor this and then send us a text message alert to inform us that something happened and that we need to go in the field to check it out. Finally is the application. So this was what our mock of the application right now, fully working. It takes the data and shows us the current values up top and the desired values below. It also allows the ability to send your own data so you can choose to turn the pump on or off as, long, as, as well as choosing a specific flow rate. The hard, hard parts of all these were actually the communication between each side and AWS. Uh, it, it provided a big trouble for how everything, all the nuances of AWS and of all the communication. So there's a couple key features for the future. Uh, we just wanted to do another version of the PCB with just minor improvements that we didn't get time to do, as well as adding a database to the app. And lastly would be actually incorporating that security chip to just further improve upon the security that's already on both the devices. Finally, we'd like to thank everybody for help along the way.